Stand on the rock. open for the first time and we just both felt like our neshamas our souls were just from here this is where we belong mm -hmm. and so it was it was you know quite a journey trying to figure out what do we do with that what do we do with that um and we were just kind of like so jeremy was kind of throwing money at this place <laughs> watching the money my, my money <laughs> <laughs> and and but we didn't really know like what what are we what are we supposed to do here and then um and then right before Rosh Hashanah, two years ago, we went to a sort of a devotional kind of uh, preparation for Rosh Hashanah. And the rabbi there said, close your eyes and envision, but really envision what is your dream for this coming year? Because Tishrei, the month of Tishrei, is from the word Shari, which in Aramaic means it's committed, it's committed to dream. Mm -hmm. And Hashem and you are dreaming together. So just dream your dream. So we get home and I you know, dreamt about whatever I dreamt about, you know. And, and I said, Jeremy, what did you dream about? And he, he described to me this place and us living here. But he didn't just like say it. He just described it in such vivid colors, like down to what we were wearing and what the kids were doing and what we looked like and, and the garden that we were building. And I suddenly got the most insane flashback. And I remember that when I was 18, before I met Jeremy, before, before anything, I had had an a really vivid dream and it had been so vivid that I I wrote it down in my in my journal but I didn't have my journal with me when I when I had the dream so I wrote it on this piece of paper and I glued it in and I went and got my I dug through all of our you know old shelves and I and I, I found this journal and Jeremy's still sitting here you know just told me about his dream I don't say anything I just open up the I don't even read it I throw it on the bed I said what do you think about that and he reads it and he's like when did you have time to write down my dream? I just told it to you. <laughs> and it was literally the exact description. I described the dream that he saw. And it was me, and I had a husband. I didn't know who it was. We were living on a farm, and it looked just like this. And I described the mountains and what we were wearing and what it looked like. And it was the exact same dream. <laughs> and at the end of it, I wrote, I feel like this is Hashem's dream for me. But I'll need a partner to do it. <laughs> <laughs> a year later, I got married to Jeremy. Um, but then, you know, life had taken us somewhere else. But it's like that dream existed for us even before we knew, each other. We knew anything about anything. Wow. And so at that point, we realized um, that this is, this is where we're going. This is where we belong. And we had, you know, we just, so we're all in. We sold our house. You know, got rid of most of everything we had and just, and we're all in here and, and we're so blessed and so grateful to be here. And I, I was just telling this to, to Lynn and to Tally and to Um that uh, a few years ago when all the Wallers came for Shabbat, yeah. Mama Jo <laughs> saw my haphazard child rearing. <laughs> And as you know, Mama Joe, for whoever knows Mama Joe, she told me what she thought about that. My grandma. <laughs> That's Tommy's mom. So she told me exactly where I was going wrong and what, what I needed to work on in our first conversation that we had. <laughs> so she, she told me where I was going wrong. And then Sherry kindly gave me a parenting book. She said, why don't you try this method? It is a book which some of you might know called um, How to Raise Godly Tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And we loved the book. And um, the, the, the main concept of the book being keep your children close, you supervise them, correct them, they're with you, you know, fellowshipping all the time. And, and so uh, when we got here, after our, all of our travels and all of the 
disaster of selling our house and being homeless and wandering around Israel for weeks and weeks. So uh, one of my kids was really behaving poorly and I, I had I had clarity. I suddenly at night I had this dream and I, I realized I need to start go back to the tomato book. I have to go back to the tomato station. I just catch her ghosts all the time. And she was really flourishing. She was just, I said, you know, we're, co we're connected with this imaginary string. We're always together. You're here with me. When I'm cooking, you're cooking. When I'm praying, you're praying. We're doing everything together. And she was just flourishing. She was so happy. And then came Yom Kippur and I realized that this place is Hashem tomato staking us. Yeah. <laughs> I realized, you know, what is tomato staking? When you when you keep your child away from all the negative influences, and their only real influence is you as their parents. Mm -hmm. I said, we left our house, all of our neighbors, all of our friends. You know, we had family all around us. Just a delightful neighborhood filled with people. We came to a place we have no internet. Even all of our books are packed away. There's nothing to do but pray around here. Like <laughs> we went out, we went to Jeremy's brother first in Katarani. He was like, to my sister, I was like, well, what do you do for fun at night? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, I guess all we can really do, we can either pray or go to bed. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much the uh, social life that there is around here. Um, Thank you. <laughs> our, our I didn't even know where you guys. I said if I couldn't keep up with where Ari and Shayna's plans were for Simchat Torah, how did I ever manage to live in a community with 400 families and keep up with everybody's bar mitzvahs and weddings? So, so, uh, so you know, we can't. So I said it, it's like Hashem took us away from all of our other influences, and He's just keeping us close. We're always close, and we always get to feel Hashem kind of bringing us back to the path. And then, you know, the other day. Uh, we have this tiny dog. He's not a very useful dog, but we can't manage to get rid of him to like his dog. So then but in his head, he is a German a shepherd warrior. <laughs> it's all in the mind. It's all in the mind. He's a big, scary looking dog who's actually just a goofy puppy. <laughs> also not trained and not very obedient. And then Jeremy left to take the kids to synagogue, and then he left me in the house, and then I didn't know, but this group of elderly, frail German women decided to come that day to visit the farm, and I didn't know they were coming, and so I'm, I'm with my baby and with my other kids, and I have these two dogs chasing after, <laughs> imagine this, a group of elderly German women. <laughs> and I'm like, well, do I throw my baby down and attack the two dogs, or do I hold the baby and stop one of the dogs? But how do I, I'm, I'm, I'm just like chasing dogs in the blasting heat around the farm all day. And then I called him, and I'm like, where are you? What is taking you so long? You left me here with so many dogs. If you can imagine how I felt when he answered me, he said, well, I don't know how to say this, but I got us another dog. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> so then Jeremy comes home, he's like, this time, this dog is trained. I'm like, after two untrained dogs, the best solution is instead of training the existing dogs, we got another dog. <laughs> okay. Okay. Trying to like, so then I just like lay like 10 minutes of just like undiluted complaining on Jeremy about how hard it all is. And in the meantime, my daughter, my five year old, who I'm tomato staking, is sitting there on, you know, looking through Jeremy. She takes Jeremy's phone, so I'm just kind of looking out. Jeremy in his gallery, if you can imagine, you know, quite a few people. So he gets a lot of videos on WhatsApp and just people send him pictures and videos. So she's going through his gallery. That's probably thousands, thousands of videos. Of all the videos that she randomly picks to click on, it's a video of, we took probably a year ago of our dear friend playing on the guitar, singing Mitzvah Gdolah Liot Besimcha. It's a great commandment of the Torah to always be happy. <laughs> <laughs> and this starts, and I'm praying the dog, the dog, the dog, the dog. And then, and then right next to me bursts out of the phone, just like instantaneous tomato staking, right? <laughs> out of all the things, just, you know, it's a great commandment to be happy. And I said, oh, thank you, Hashem, for tomato staking me. As soon as I kind of go off the path a little bit, he puts me right back on the path. <laughs> it's such a blessing. And Jeremy's like, oh, you know. and Jeremy's brother came out here um, with a with a, a big rabbi from, from the U.S. And he's walking around our house and going, Rabbi, look, look what self-sacrifice. Masir at Nefesh, they're, they're, they're self-sacrifice for God to live here. I'm like, self-sacrifice? This is not self-sacrifice. This is the greatest privilege that there could ever be. And he's like looking at my mess of like boxes and toys and I'm not very good at housekeeping. 
Like he's like, look at the mess they live in. Look at the squalor. It's such a sacrifice. I'm like, I actually just cleaned that room. I thought I was going to do that. He's like, look at the self-sacrifice living in these horrendous conditions. Like, That's actually my cleanest room. Um, so, and then. And, and I thought, you know, we're just we're just so blessed. And then we took the rabbi out to see the farm, and he looks at the view from next to our house. I don't know if you got a chance to see it, but just at the beautiful mountains. And this rabbi, you know, he's very, very pious, very learned, and he says, wait a minute, there has to be a bracha that you say here. There has to be a bracha. Like, there must be a blessing. And he's, like, racking his mind from, like, the prayer book, trying to remember, what what's the blessing that you say when you see such a thing? And I said, I, I don't think that there's... A, a blessing in the prayer book specific to this kind of situation and he's like oh well you know and he kind of walks in. and then I, I was reflecting on it later and I said that is exactly the point of this place to connect to that soul you know mind situation that all the people who wrote the prayer book were in when they thought of all those prayers that just wanting to call out wanting to praise and that place just and this place is able to, he, he was connecting to that feeling of, I want to call out, I want to praise. I can't necessarily put it into a box of law of exactly what's the right words to say, but that's where it springs forth from within us. And that's what this place is able to draw out, and that's what we feel like is our responsibility, you know, and our gratefulness to Hashem for bringing us here. It's our responsibility to share that with everyone, so we're just so grateful that you guys came out to see us. Oh, yeah. This guy came out to install our trampoline and our basketball hoop. It was a funny story, actually, how they got here. They were an hour away, and they said, we'll be there in an hour. And then an hour and 15 minutes go by. I say, I say, where are you guys? They go, it was too scary. We turned around. <laughs> I said, you guys don't sound like sissies to me. You sound like men. I said, you guys are afraid of a few Arabs? He's like, yeah, we're pretty afraid. I said, I promise you, if you come out here, I said, you'll be talking about it for a month. It'll be your favorite trampoline installation that you've had all year. <laughs> and they came out and they were just like blown away. And they're taking selfies. And the guy says to me, he looks at the house of prayer and he sees somebody's working on it, building the roof. And he goes, wait a minute, I'm confused. Is that building old or is that building new? And I said, that is exactly the point. Chadesh Yamenu Kekedim, renew our days as of old. Right? Bringing back the old biblical life in our times to be able to feel what our fathers and what the prophets felt here in the land but in our times yes. that's exactly the point i said you got it you nailed you hit the nail on the head so um thank you guys for coming out to be here with us